Hello, good evening to you and welcome to News 360. It's coming to you live from the News Hub here at Odessa Wakanda. I'm Natalie Fort. And my name is Alfred Okanse. Coming up in the bulletin tonight. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, Heaven Black Mosquito Coil and Spray, Premier Health Insurance, Calipo, Nido. Top on the news this evening, Ghana Union of Traders Association suspends its planned protest against implementation of the cargo tracking note policy. Also, the NDC flag brasher race heightens as founding member Guzi Tano officially joins the race. Also ahead this evening, residents of Dome Kwabena threaten a massive demonstration owing to the poor state of roads in the area. And also, German automobile giant Volkswagen to set up factory in Ghana. On the international front tonight, three killed and 27 arrested in South African township of Soweto following violence and looting of foreign-owned businesses. We've got the details of all these stories and some more news for you here on News 360. As always, the bulletin is streaming live all across the world on 3news.com and TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Feel free, as always. We're very interactive tonight here on News 360. We're live on DSTV Channel 279 all across the world on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. To our first story is the evening after opening for a month and seeing outpatients and only referral cases, the newly built University of Ghana Medical Center has so far seen only nine cases. Uh, management of the hospital say they are not in a rush to operate fully when it does not have the requisite systems in place for a full operation. Kamala Kluche has the following report. Checked all equipment, functioning, emergency, sustaining walls all properly, positioned with functioning equipment. The $217 million facility has 617 beds, ultra-modern medical gadgets, was completed amid controversy by the s John Mahama administration, but was never fully functional. Back and forth, months passed and the Kufado government would not open the facility because it claimed there had been some irregularities involving past management and some senior staff of the University of Ghana. But after months of social media campaign, which got the First Lady's attention, government yielded to opening the facility, but with caution. Only referral and outpatient cases are to be attended to uh, a month after the start. Management says it is slowly putting in place structures. Chief Executive Officer of the hospital, Dr. Darius Osei, would not Sorry, speak on record but agreed to take the news team on a tour. He said approval have just been given for the hospital to do. For the hospital to procure some essential services through sole sourcing as the facility does not have a procurement officer. Also, a hospital information software has been installed. What has currently been installed is uh, the UGMC hospital management system. If the camera can come in a little bit, can, this is just the software as it is. This contains the bio data of every patient that walks into the facility and you are given a unique number ID or code which whenever you come to the hospital that's what you would have to use. Let me just speak with Susan who is an information uh, management person here. From what uh, you have displayed for the one month that uh, the hospital has been operating and receiving patients, how many uh, patients have you attended to so far? Okay, so so far we've attended to nine patients. As you can see here on the platform, you can see that the next patient that will be taken care of is the number 10. So, so far, nine patients. There's only five specialties that are available now the pre surgery, gynecology, um, family medicine physician specialist and then the pre-surgery the pharmacy is getting stocked with drugs and some work is being done while these numbers are not large enough the medical center has its standby ambulance on duty for further referrals for admissions dr darius Jose admits the medical center has not positioned itself to receive more patients because of the current state of the facility 
management of the University of Ghana Medical uh, Center say already procurement processes uh, have begun for the purchase of some hospital equipment and also recruitment of staff the management say they are sticking to the number of people who have already been interviewed and have their names in the database they will still be working with that number the Komla Kluche, tv3 news university of ghana in some other news this evening, the Ghana Union of Traders Association, GUTA, has suspended its planned protest against the implementation of the cargo tracking note policy. This follows postponement of the implementation of the cargo tracking note policy to October 15, 2018. Officials at GUTA say their decision to suspend its planned protest against the implementation of the cargo tracking note policy, CTN, follows an assurance given to it by the president, Nana Adodankwa Ikufuado, to resolve all issues related to the system before October 15, 2018. The president of Guta, Dr. Joseph Oben, speaking at an event which was meant to announce the closure of shops in protest against the CTN, said the CTN's pilot phase was implemented with minimal stakeholder consultation and its full implementation now will lead to a reduction in turnaround time at the ports. We have issues to deal with. So for the six weeks that have been suspended and the CTN has been suspended, we urge all institutions to do what they have to do. Otherwise, our luta continue. The executive director of the Food and Beverage Association of Ghana, Samuel Agri, said the CTN will lead to a duplication of systems already in place and add to the cost of operations at the ports. So we are saying we cannot have two organizations doing the same thing. Because if you are doing the CTN as uh, another uh, private entity and Ghana Customs is also doing, the ultimate organization is the Ghana Customs. So when you place your invoice from CTN and they tell you they don't agree with the benchmark values that you have, then they take it off. So what happens to all the investment that you've done previously? President of the Ghana Institute of Fit Forwarders, Kwabina Ofosu Apia said combining the two would escalate the cost of doing business. 22 nations doing what? CTN on what model? The CTN is a security model. Originally, you have to have people on the ground inspecting what is going into the container. Is this CTN that we are implementing today, have they got boots on the ground to inspect the cargo before they are put into the container? So what is the value proposition? The CTN, which took effect July 1, 2018, was introduced by government to track all imports in order to reduce revenue losses associated with under-declaration of goods at the ports. Per the policy complete compliance, vessels will not load containers without CTN numbers at the port of loading. Well, Germany has pledged to support Ghana's industrialization program in order to realize the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. Speaking at a conference at the Jubilee House, German Chancellor Angela Merkel disclosed that automobile, that automobile giant Volkswagen will soon set up an assembling plant in the country. Chancellor Angela Merkel's visit is part of a three-nation tour of Africa comprising Senegal, Ghana, and Nigeria. Angela Merkel's visit is the first by German Chancellor to Ghana since 2004. The visit focused on economic cooperation and the promotion of investment and business in Ghana. At a press conference, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel said Germany is ready to support Ghana's industrialization agenda. We are cooperating in a whole host of areas and our objective is to support Ghana in uh, making the vision come true that the president has had and has described and that is to create a Ghana capable of saying that we no longer need to rely on foreign aid to establish a Ghana beyond aid as he called it. It's not an easy path but it's, it's exactly the right thing to do I believe and I'm convinced that the people of Ghana are indeed capable, are willing and uh, ready to do just that. This is people helping train young people, uh, help shape the energy system in a more efficient ma manner, adapting it to new challenges, but also to provide assistance in the field of industrialization. 
President Ikufuado said Ghana is poised to work towards creating investment and opportunities for Ghanaian youth. We are determined to deal with the, the matters confronting our country, youth unemployment, the desire of our youth to see greener pastures elsewhere, by improving the management of our national economy. The stronger the economy we have, the more opportunities it gives to young people, but obviously the pressure that there will be on them to make these hazardous undertakings. On migration, the German Chancellor said Germany is ready to support Ghana deal with migration challenges. We want to do whatever we can to avoid a situation where young people are so desperate that they set out on a life-threatening journey uh, in order to emigrate to uh, European countries. We want them to be able to find their opportunities here. And we also intend to cooperate on uh, legal migration issues, granting visa for students from Ghana to go and come to Germany to be trained there or to uh, no, go to university there. The German leader will next visit West Africa's populous and largest country, Nigeria. Now, Vice President Dr. Mahamadou Baumia has met the German delegation at the Jubilee House in Accra to discuss business opportunities in the country. Other discussions focused on rolling out a cashless system of payments on government contracts from November this year to help reduce corruption. Dr. Mahamadou Baumia met the German delegation to discuss business opportunities in the country. Discussions among others centered on infrastructure and setting the economy on sound footing. He emphasized stringent economic policies which have maintained the macroeconomic stability. Of major interest to him is the digitization of the economy to boost investor confidence. We are trying to formalize the economy uh, by issuing national ID cards, digital address systems, and so on. Uh, so there's a whole digitization process that is going on in Ghana uh, to try to help formalize the economy. Uh, and, and, and so doing smart uh, driver's licenses, smart vehicle registrations, national ID, digital address, and so on. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia again underscored the need to introduce a cash challenge tax authorities, for example, to try to, to bring in a mobile app next year so that people can file their taxes. Earlier, the vice president was at the VIP launch of the airport to welcome the German chancellor to Ghana, Dr. Angela Merkel. Dr. Merkel inspected a guard of honor mounted for her. Dr. Angela Merkel is on a day state's visit to Ghana to strengthen bilateral ties between the two countries. Well, now, the head of Ghana Civil Service has cautioned public and civil servants to exhibit fairness and justice in their work or risk sanctions, the sanctions which have been incorporated in the performance contracts of chief directors and staff include dismissals and reduction in, in rank. Now, Nanei Jekum Jamana gave the warning at an official ceremony to recognize the immeasurable role of civil and public servants in Accra. The head of civil service emphasized integrity and professionalism as key tenets of a civil servant. He again underscored justice and truthfulness as key ingredients in promoting an effective civil service. He praised some public servants, including the public relations of the Ghana Football Association, for not being cited in the Anas Exposé. In pursuance of that, the civil service boss, Anejekum Jamuna, cautioned politicians and civil servants to stop engaging in acts of corruption. Ghana can only make good use of its physical environmental and human resources to achieve its national outcomes of a high quality of life. Only when we as a people run a clean and robust government, build strong institutions, exhibit international intellectual honesty. Deputy Minister of Employment and Labor Relations, Bright Riku Brobi, praised civil servants for their hard work despite constraints in budgetary allocation. In the ministry, I came from the private sector. And sometimes when I want A4 to do my work, and I'm calling for it, and it's like it's not coming. Sometimes when the printer is broken down, 
In the midst of all this, some of you are using your personal laptops and computers to get work done. The Executive Secretary of the Civil Local Government Staff Association, Clarkson, Ghana, Isaac Bampuado, cautioned the politicians to stop politicizing the civil service. If the civil servant is given the training hmm, so that he's perfect in doing whatever, whatever duty that he has to do, we don't have a problem. Politicians may come and go. The civil servant is permanent. He is the custodian of all the good governors that we are talking about. The theme for the event was upholding integrity in the public service. Some retired heads of the civil service were rewarded for their devotion to duty during their time. Now, the spokesperson for the national chief imam, Sheikh Aramiao Shaibu, has challenged the official population of Muslims in Ghana, which is pegged at 17.6%. This follows public outcry against the construction of a national cathedral. Speaking on 3FM's morning show Sunrise with Winston Amwa, Sheikh Aramiao asserted that the central mosque and the national cathedral were misplaced comparisons. Sheikh Arimiyal Shaibu argued the two most dominant religions are Islam and Christianity, hence his call for the construction of an interfaith edifice instead of the National Cathedral. He said in the last census, the Muslim community in Ghana rejected the 17.6% Muslim population figures churned out. About 20 years ago, the, the, the census that was done, we, I, I was part of the, the group that said that, that thing. I mean, we rejected the whole result. Mm -hmm. And we still stand, stand by it. Mm -hmm. Instead, we were 15.6 in this country. We said, no, it is not true. It's not true. The following this thing, they said we were 17.6. We rejected it. But that, but that we, we said that, let's, let's go back and do the census very but well. But you've not put out any figure to the contrary. Oh, we have not put out it. And, that, and that's why we, 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 so, but so, we have so, challenged so, it. So officially no, no. we would accept we the ones have, that, 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 that is available. It. We have challenged it. So let, that, that's why I say I don't want to go there. Mm. He also cleared the air about who was funding the construction of the central mosque. This mosque that we've been built is not a state project. I, and I challenge anyone who says it's a state project. It's never a state project. But the land was given by the state. In replacement of our land, our mosque that was demolished, it's an emotional thing. In replacement, let's create the two contests. I'm, I'm saying that, that's this why I'm saying that it was wrong for people to have drawn the comparison. The National Cathedral has generated a national debate following reports that houses belonging to some superior court judges will be pulled down to make way for the cathedral. On MTN Video Report, today our citizen journalist Yakub Oedi highlights the flood issue at Bangkang, uh, Yili, in the northern region. This route is a link between Nanton Kuru and Batang Yili in the Savlogo Nanton district. Pedestrians who want to cross the route will rather park their bicycles and their motorbikes before they can cross. In fact, most farmers in Batangile and Nantokoro do cross there to farm. People cannot cross to do their daily businesses unless they park their machines and cross to their destinations. When they are back, they pick their motorbikes again. Uh, you can also send your video report via WhatsApp number 055-1433-044. That's 055-1433-044. It's still live here on News 360. There's more to come as we get into analysis of the NDC flag bearership race and issues in the world of business. Do stay. It's time for business. A very good evening to you and thanks for staying with us on News 360. My name is Nanikia. 
Mensa Bampa. We begin from the banking sector and banks were last recapitalized in 2012 when the Bank of Ghana asked banks to raise their stated capital from 60 million cities at the time to 120 million cities with barely four months left to meet the new minimum capital requirement of 400 million cities. We assess the chances of banks that are likely to meet the requirement. The 2012 round of recapitalization led to the consolidation of three banks, the Trust Bank into Ecobank, Intercontinental Bank into Access Bank, and Amalgamated Bank into Bank of Africa. Commercial banks are intensifying their efforts to meet the new minimum capital requirement by December this year. The Bank of Ghana first announced the new 400 million cities minimum capital requirement in September 2017. The commercial banks were among others expected to present a recapitalization plan by November the same year. As of December 2017, the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. N.S. Addison, disclosed that all 34 banks had fulfilled this requirement. However, a few months down the line, there have been some shakeups in the banking sector. It began with the Bank of Ghana releasing the Capital Requirements Directive for banks. This sets the requirements by which banks will calculate their level of capital ahead of the December 31 deadline. And then the measures and acquisition directive by the Bank of Ghana, which broadly discusses relevant legal basis to consider a merger or acquisition, the specific requirements of the financial institution in question, and the possible sanctions for non-compliance. The central bank led the merger regime by merging Beige, Sovereign, Construction, Unibank, and Royal Bank into the Consolidated Bank of Ghana. Shortly after, GN Bank announced a merger with Sahel Sahara Bank and Premium Bank, but Sahel Sahara Dish GN Bank and rather merged with Omni Bank. Even though there are talks of a few more measures and acquisitions, they are yet to be finalized and made public. Bank of Ghana has announced that 15 banks are on their way to meeting the new minimum capital requirement by December. It is unclear which banks they are and how many of them are indigenous. The Bank of Ghana has however given a strong indication it will support local banks which are well managed to raise the 400 million. So far, Access Bank, ADB, Bank of Africa Ghana, Bank of Baroda, BSIC Ghana, Barclays Bank Ghana, Car Bank, Consolidated Bank, Echo Bank, Energy Commercial Bank, FBN Bank, Fidelity Bank, First Atlantic Bank, First National Bank, GCB Bank, GN Bank Limited, Guarantee Trust Bank, Republic Bank, National Investment Bank, Prudential Bank, Societe General, Stambic Bank, Standard Chartered Bank, United Bank of Africa, Universal Merchant Bank, Zenith Bank, Premium Bank, Omni Bank, Heritage Bank, and GHL Bank Limited are all in the race to raise the 400 million cities. As to who will make it, only time will tell. Eton Amse, TV3. And former finance minister said Tekpe has accepted responsibility for the collapse of some seven indigenous banks in the country that has caused almost 2,000 job losses within a year. Seth Tekpe, however, said he cannot be blamed for the financial mess that is shaking the foundation of the banking industry. Seven indigenous banks have collapsed in the last year after the Bank of Ghana revoked their license for being highly insolvent. While the Ghana Commercial Bank took over the good assets of UTN Capital Banks, which collapsed in August 2017, five others whose collapse were announced by the Bank of Ghana on August 1, 2018, have been consolidated to form the Consolidated Bank Ghana Limited. When asked whether he accepts blame for the collapse of the banks and the crisis the banking sector is faced with on TV3's New Day program, Former Finance Minister Setepe contended that the government at the time took steps to prevent the crisis. I will take responsibility, not the blame. You can, you can do the blame game. The goal was to restructure VRA's legacy debt, which had been a major impediment to the smooth operation of VRA's business. Mm. Then goes on to say the debt overhang 
had also exposed the banking sector to the possibility of systemic risk mm. as the magnitude of the exposure weighed heavily on the asset you know quality okay. you know of of the banks mm. then it goes on to say that uh, the agreement which was done which we did right. in 2016 mm. embodied the following a restructuring of the cd component of vra's debt in the amount of 765 million a restructuring of u.s dollar component mm. you know which we did at 8.5 percent in a way when asked whether he accepts blame for the collapse of the banks and the crisis the banking sector is faced with on tv3's new day program former finance minister said Tepe contended that the government at the time took steps to prevent the crisis right of contractors Absolutely. right so there's more of that story on 3news.com but let's move away from the banking sector and telecoms giant mtn has secured over 1 billion uh, ghana cities in a historic initial public offering according to persons with knowledge of the offer results now mtn in may formally launched its initial public offering seeking to raise about 3.47 billion ghana cities it was hoping to sell each share uh, at 75 uh, Ghana pesos by issuing some 4.6 billion shares. Now, MTN also pegged the minimum amount to be raised under the offer at 347 million Ghana cities. Now, this amount, if secured, would make the offer successful. The telecoms giants to the IPO is giving out about 35% of the business to the public. And so, have you ever thought of using a perfume that seduces, builds confidence, or makes you independent? Well, Gandor Cosmetics has introduced on the market affordable and portable fragrances of perfume that meets the needs of both male and female. Gandia Cosmetics is noted for superior range of skin and hair care products and has been in West Africa for the past 15 years. The middle range of perfume comes with male, female and unisex brands which are made for the pocket, targeting perfume lovers. Middle perfumes are made for males who are in for seduction, those who engage in intense activities and the confident ones. The female mid of perfumes come for the brave ones, for the passionate and independent. The unisex mid of brand gives fragrance to those who love to explore, to experience and discover. Product development manager Claire Hubert said the main aim for the product is to meet the needs of perfume lovers who cannot afford and will also want to carry their perfumes around. We always every time start in the market to do some research so what is really the demands of the people in the market and what sells and we realize that people really like to have a different kind of perfume and a lot of perfumes they are 50 ml or they are bigger 100 ml where now our own perfume is 20 ml so it's a very small version pocket perfume you can take it in, in your suit in your in your pockets you can put it in your bathroom in your car it's very easy very light to carry anywhere around so it's easier to smell fresh and they cool anywhere you go. He insists that the fragrance lasts longer on the body with variety of smell one can choose from. All our perfumes, they have been tested properly and the things that we test them on is first of all long lasting and second of all how strong they are because we know that the Ghanaian people usually like strong perfumes. So those two are our main aspects in choosing our fragrances. So from maybe having about 50 different fragrances, we have now brought it back to nine that are super outstanding for us. And those nine are the ones that we present to, to the Ghanaian markets. It is said that using perfume enhances the mood, helps uplift one's spirit and build confidence. There's more on 3 newscom That will do for business tonight with me, Nanikia Mensa Grandpa Alfred is standing by with some politics. Absolutely. Let's get into the NDC. Now, Augustus Guzzi Tano has officially presented his letter of intent to contest the NDC flag brushing race, addressing party faithful. He refuted claims that he once abandoned the party to pursue personal ambition. Bright Jacker has more. As one of the key founding members of the NDC, Guzitano worked closely with the party founder, ex-president Jerry John Rawlins. 
But in 1999, Gozitano broke away from the NDC and formed the National Reform Party, a party he led during the 2000 presidential elections where he got only 1.1% of the total valid votes. He returned to the folds of the National Democratic Congress with his colleagues from the National Reform Party after several appeals made by the late president, John Atta Mills, in 2007. However, much has not been heard and seen of him in the NDC till now. But Guzitando, after submitting his letter of intention to the party on Thursday, indicative of his readiness to contest for the flag bearership position of the party, explained what he has been doing for the party in the quiet since he rejoined the NDC. You must remember, it was Professor Mills who made the initiative and we followed suit by engaging him, by asking him, what the programs of NDC will be and whether the reforms that we wanted in terms of greater transparency, democracy and accountability in NDC could be implemented. And he said he was happy and absolutely supportive of our positions and he, he felt that it could be implemented within the framework of NDC and therefore we should come back and we did. Guzi Tando maintained re-energizing the grassroots of the party would be his focus for the election 2020. We have a political culture that has uh, sent our country to a certain measure of continuing decay. We either continue that path or we change. You and I, it's not just me, all of us, we have a choice. Either we want to develop or we want to stay where we are and keep complaining. I don't want to complain, I want to do. After receiving the letter, the party's general secretary, Johnson Esidun Ketia, noted the party is working behind the scenes to ensure smooth elections. Once we know your intention, our searchlight will be on you wherever you go and we will be listening to your utterances and see where there is need to engage you for corrections and so on. And then you also would have an opportunity to um, access our structures to be able to sell your message. So it's a win-win situation. <laughs> So that's what the NDC presidential race looks like. And Guzitano joining in the race there makes the number go up to 12. Here, though, it's 11. I'm going to run you through the men who are contesting for the NDC presidential race ahead of election 2020. John Dramani Mahama, obviously he's been president before. Echo Spio Gabra, Professor Joshua Alabi, Kweku Ricketts Hagen. Adding up to the list of these gentlemen who are contesting NDC elections 20. 20, in addition to Guzi Tano's participation there, takes the numbers a little higher. And adding up to that list, we also, we also have Sylvester Mensah Aben Bakben and Nuruddin Idrisu, as well as Stephen Atubiga on that list there. And there's Elik Bling Agbe Mava and David Doche Kwame Kuada, and as well as Augustus Obu Dam Tano. And this takes the race, as I said earlier, takes the numbers to 12 with Guzi Tano's participation ahead of the NDC elections 2020. We'll certainly be following through and see how that pans out, Alfred. Absolutely. Let's now go on to Skype now. And Dr. Edward Brenya is a senior political science lecturer at uh, the Kwame Kuma University of Science and Technology. Dr. Brenya, thank you. Good evening to you, if you can hear me, sir. Good evening. Great. Now, I want to find out what your thoughts are on the uh, uh, decision by Gosi Tano to contest. This is a man who, uh, from 1999 to 2007, cut ties with the NDC uh, from then up until nine, o o over 11 years now. Really, would you say that he's been in political abeyance or he's been active so much to give him a chance in this race? Um, good evening to the able listeners of 3 I think... Uh, we have to at least give credit to the man for what he said that uh, in 2004, uh, the ex-president, um, Athamos, deceased, actually approached and um, tried to convince them. And since then, he claims that he's been part of the party. Uh, whether or not uh, Gustano will make any difference would depend on how he um, solves himself, making himself to the grassroots. He said he's been in contact with the grassroots. If... Um, people of uh, like uh, the current uh, chairman of MPP who come from a different political party and build himself up to the point where he become the national chairman, I think that if, if Zidano indeed 
sells his message to the people and get the people to buy his message and trust him to lead the party, I don't see why he will not make a difference. Now, if you listen to all the candidates, they keep talking about the grassroots, connection with the grassroots, revitalizing, reviving, re reorganizing the grassroots. From your own analysis, is, is the grassroots ready uh, for any other candidate apart from John Mahama, at least considering the 10 or 11 who have put themselves up? I mean, it, it, this is a, um, a question, a big question that I would want to defer to the grassroots, the NDC, and the delegates. Um, you see, sometimes, yes, if we are talking about the individual that has been marketed, that is known, because he's had several positions, including the vice president and the president of the republic, then, of course, the name John Dramani, Mama, and the figure does resonate with a lot of people. But I believe that at this point, given what happened in 2016, and the grassroots are really ready to listen to any individual that they feel might be able to give them what they want. So if in the end any of these candidates is able to provide that, I believe the best candidate will win by reconnecting with the grassroots and giving them that confidence that should they allow that individual to be the flag bearer, that they would get what they want from them. You know, how much of a popularity or, of John Mahama would really do for him? Because one of the things is that I keep saying he's a most marketed, very popular, but how much of that popularity will play in, in an election, a general election for that matter? I, I, I wouldn't deny the fact that uh, John Mahama is the most marketed and also popular based on the reason that I say that. But you see, his popularity comes with both negative and positive. The positive part is that, yes, he's well known. He can draw on some of his past records in making his argument as others would have to sort of write on his record. But then it comes with the negatives that Ghanaian had known him, the way the opposition had tagged him, and all the kind of things that we heard about John Mahama going to 2016. So if John Mahama should emerge as the flag bearer and a new strategy is not put in place, to remarket him and represent another image of him either than going to 2016, that could be his negative. So it is both a negative and positive issue. The end results will depend on the NDC or uh, whoever emerges as the flag bearer and whoever is able to connect not just to the uh, with the NDC but Ghanaians at large. Doc, thank you so much for your time this evening. I'm grateful. Dr. Edward Benya is a senior political science lecturer at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. And away from that, the concerned residents and business owners of Domic Kwabena in the Great Aqua region say they will on September 4, 2018, stage a massive demonstration to show their displeasure about the road network in the area. The convener of the group, Emmanuel Andongo, says it is unacceptable in the 21st century to ply on unmotorable roads. The, the Dome Kwabenya Road have become a challenge for residents in the Ga East Municipal Assembly. There are gullies and huge potholes scattered on the surface of the roads. The situation is said to be worse when it rains. Motorists, especially taxi drivers plying it daily, complain of frequent mechanical falls. However, most are left with no choice than to crawl on the unmotorable roads. Concerned residents and business owners of Dome Kwabenya have lamented for close to five years about the dust from the untarred and pothole ridden road which is making life uncomfortable for them. According to the group, some commercial drivers do not want to ply the roads because of their poor state. They therefore implore the authorities to urgently come to their aid. We have a very bad road network in Kwabenya. And when we decided to make our voices heard, our honorable member came in, intervened and asked us to give them time, which we did. But over two to three months now, we are not seeing any action being taken to see whether the roads can be constructed to help businesses to flourish, to help in our security system, to help in easy access to health. Convener of the group, Emmanuel Adongo, said drivers had to mend their way to avoid the many potholes. He threatened that the group will, on September 4 this year, stage a massive demonstration to register their displeasure. We want the government of the day to know 
that we are suffering. Our businesses are collapsing. All the food vendors on the road cannot do any better business because the dust will settle on the food. You're watching News 360. We've got some sports news coming up with Thierry Nan in a few moments. Stay with us. Hello, good evening, and it's time for me to bring you all the latest from the world of sports right here on News 360. My name is Thierry Nyan. Now, Indiana Stars departed the CAF Confederations Cup on Wednesday after a dismal display in Morocco. The Doma side were already out of the tournament, but their defeat, which is the heaviest in Ghana football history in CAF competitions, revealed more cracks in their setup than just the bad football. Maybe Ghana champions. But their performance in the CAF competitions were nothing to write home about. To begin with, Indiana Stars lost 4 1 on aggregate against ES Atif in the last qualifying round. Their relegation to the Confederations Cup prompted positive hopes, but their displays were anything but. In what was the worst result a Ghanaian club has suffered in a continental competition, Indiana Stars were thumped 6 0 by Raja Casablanca to firm up their exit from the tournament this season. Ghana's only representative leaves the tournament with their heads very low. The players who endured the torrid time on the pitch were the ones to blame at the end. But no one can discount the attitude of head coach Kenichi Yatsuhashi who stormed out of the game at halftime and went AWOL until after the game. Assistant coach Paul Tando who took over the reins until full-time reveals player injuries. Ghana football in activity led to the disastrous turnout in Morocco. My country, you know, uh, is hit with a uh, football uh, crisis. So we're not privileged to register uh, new players at CAF. And just our last training before we traveled, we picked three injuries. This is football and nothing we can do. But unfortunately, I think you can all see just before the start of the game, our head coach started uh, changing uh, attitude and the players were all down and it was saddened. This affected the first half of the game and uh, you notice that if it is so, then the players will not uh, be strong. Even at the recess, he decided not to even come to the dressing room at all. And for what reason, he is the best person who understands. So I must come and take over as the assistant because I cannot leave the vacuum. In what is a combination of poor organization, player injuries and poor attitude and preparation to the tournament, once again, Ghanaian clubs cannot be counted when major African clubs are at the business end of the tournament. All right, so I'm not sure what experience would be for a player if your coach walks away on you, goes AWOL at halftime. Kenichi Yatsuhashi has major issues to deal with. But uh, let's move away from there. Let's go straight to uh, UEFA because uh, some very, very big news has been trickling in. From there, Manchester United will face a reunion with Cristiano Ronaldo after drawing uh, Serie A champions Juventus in the Champions League group stage. Ronaldo, who was at United between 2003 and 2009, joined Juventus for £99.2 million in July after nine years at Real Madrid. Now, Valencia and Young Boys are the other teams in Group H. Now, elsewhere, Tottenham Hotspur have been drawn in a tough group to face Barcelona, while last season's runner-up, Liverpool, face Paris Saint-Germain and Napoli. Last season's winners, Real Madrid, who have won the competition for the past three years, are in Group G with Roma, CSK Moscow and Victoria Pleasant. Now, in other uh, group pairings, there is uh, Atletico Madrid, also in the same group as uh, Borussia Dortmund, AS Monaco and Club Bruges, and then Bayern Munich also uh, housed with Benfica, Ayas and AEK Athens. Manchester City are in Group F with Shakhtar Donetsk, Lyon and Hoffenheim. All right, so it wasn't just, uh, you know, the groupings of the, uh, you know, Champions League next season or this season that was done at that particular um, event earlier today. Also, some awards were dished out. Some of the best players who have stood out in the past 12 months in UEFA competitions were awarded. Now, for the UEFA Champions League Men's Player of the Year, Luka Modric, some say surprisingly, but yes, he got the award. 
UEFA Champions League forward of the season just purely for his goals. Cristiano Ronaldo was awarded for that. UEFA Champions League midfielder of the season, Luka Modric. Defender of the season, Sergio Ramos. Goalkeeper of the season, Kelo Navas. And then UEFA President's Award went to David Beckham. That was an honorary award. And then the UEFA Women's Player of the Year uh, also went to Peniel Harder, a uh, you know, Wolfsburg and Den Denmark player. One of the biggest casualties uh, from that particular list, obviously, has to be Mohamed Salah. After a stunning season, he missed out on these. But anyway, that's exactly where we bring an end to this sports bulletin right here on the Newser uh, 360. My name is Theo and we'll bring you more sports later on Sports Unlimited at 10.30 p.m. Hello there. It's time to do some entertainment news tonight on News 360. So where will you be spending your weekend? Traffic leads to Cape Coast as Media General's event team line up a lot of fun filled activities to spice up this year's fit to a fashion. Group head of events, lifestyle and entertainment, Kenneth Addo, talks more about the fun package for Cape Coasters. Abba. Abba. Fight to Afashe, a festival by the chiefs and people of the Ugwa traditional area, attract thousands of revelers to the tourism hub each year. The 2018 edition climaxes this weekend with irresistible fun activities made possible by Media General Event Team. What we stand to promote is uh, support culture and tourism and our heritage as well, as we bring entertainment to the people of Ghana. Patrons will be teased with the hard to resist aroma of delicious local cuisine. We are actually preparing for the cooking competition at the Alto Austin Garden where we are looking at different local meals that are made from the central region. And oh yeah, good music will be served. <laughs> Hello beautiful people, this is your girl Isha and yes you're going to catch me live at the TV3 Afasha Music Jam on the 31st of August. It's going to be live inside the Chapel Square at Cape Coast. Yes, it's going to be awesome. There is absolutely no excuse to miss the fun as the best of showstoppers have been lined up to light up the stage. A special spotlight will also be thrown on promising Cape Coast grown talents. We're also uh, looking at a big music jam on Friday 31st August at the Chapel Square. What that seeks to bring is that we are supporting uh, young talent, um, locally brewed talent. So we call them talents brewed in Ghana for Ghana by Ghana. This time we're looking at talents brewed in the central region. The music jam will take place at the Chapel Square, but beyond the fun, revelers will most definitely leave knowing a thing or two about the tourism hub. Yo, 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 we have Ghana, we have Cape Coast. Call me the Cape Town Mafia, the Bonyo rapper. He's a it surely promises to be a big weekend. Away from that, legendary actor Mark Jordan Amate will be laid to rest on September 8th in Accra. The body of a multiple award-winning actor will be laid in state at the forecourt of the State House ahead of his burial. Miss um, Mark Jordan Amate, one of the 90s favorite actors, had a sterling career spanning over four decades. He starred in movies like Stolen Pregnancy, Double Sense, 419, and the popular series such as Fresh Trouble and the Edie Coco series. Aged 82, the star actor passed away on 5th July 2018 after a short illness. Free me something! I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. And may he rest in peace. Let's still stay with music. Now, Anajoya, the hit maker, Keke Fusu, has opened up on the kind of relationship that exists between himself and his fellow high life colleague, Bisakede. In a chat with Johnny Hughes on TV3's New Day, Keke Fusu disclosed that Bisakede is his family in music business, but not his friend. Who with uh, Bisakede? Yeah, we're okay. You're cool now. Mm, but friends. we're not friends. You're not like, friends? Yeah, like how people want us to be. I have my friend, he has his friend. Ask him somebody can somebody call him and ask, 
when was the last time he picked his phone and called me and said, Oh, Brian, to say, and I only had to So you are not friends, you are not, you are not cool. No, we, no, so you are not cool. No, no, no. When we talk about music, we are family in the music business, but okay. he's not my friend. He's not your to friend. To say, Be a mefa phone, a friend. Samini account, Samini has my brother. Okay. So I meet me for phone, Samini to me for phone, no, a friend. So, so you're very parallel with Mr. Keda, is that it? No, no. We are not. But we are not friends. So you're the man. So you heard it from him. He is family in music business, but they're not friends. <laughs> Alfred. <laughs> well, friendship is. Do you get the difference? I mean, he's clearly differentiated from yeah. himself. Yeah, so we're, we're colleagues in the business. We are not friends. We're not very friends. sure. <laughs> but the most important thing is, you guys are my friends. Uh -huh. and everybody on the team are my friends. So definitely, you out there are our friends as well. <laughs> we want to thank you yeah. for spending your 60 minutes with us here on News 360. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I'm Natalie Ford. Visit our website. It's 3news.com for some more news. News at 10. We'll simulcast on 3FM 92.7. Have a lovely evening. There's a difference between no, friendship.